conceptually, if someone can understand how the kingdom age is going to arise naturally, supernaturally, by love, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit thereof, it'll come to pass that in the latter days that they will walk with their God and they will walk with their gods and they will walk with their God all in peace because the law of love that the Lord has given now unto all flesh in accordance with Isaiah 54, 3, the covenant given in the latter days, Jeremiah 31, 1 of Jeremiah 31, where God has promised to remove our burden yoke of bad religiosity in these days of the refiner's fire purifying our religiosity into making a spiritual loving kind people with one another we've lost the kindness and the love along the way i already have people uh, accusing me of being a very wicked wicked man because i'm preaching what i am and so you know there is no darker gross darkness than ignorance alone of love and for that reason my friend minnie is lighting a candle of hope because she knows, and Mickey has told me many times, it's been a world of festering fears and tears, and they are as a cancer unto our soul. So the Lord is promising us in these latter days, in the book of Jeremiah 30, 24, he says to the world, he says, it is written that it shall be considered in the latter days. And since it actually says that, maybe it's kind of because he therefore says, and I promise I would return my terrifying, fierce anger if my people of love give me the desire of my love and heart to be loving people also. And to stop being as shallow as a glass of water so that you can receive the great ocean, bottomless one of his endless adoration. For he is the Alpha and the Omega he is the beginning and the end of our religion and the beginning of our most loving spirituality yet to come that will birth his age of the lion and the lamb. And then out of darkness shall come all the prisoners. There shall be reestablished upon this planet penal colonies like Australia had in its beginnings all over the world. There will not be cruel and unusual punishment because we have to realize that none of us have had any love at all if there has been conditions to it. So the Lord God says in this hour that the veil that has been over all nations, as he proclaimed in Isaiah 25, that he by his spirit of love shall now remove off all nations. For this has been the gross darkness of Isaiah 60. And Christ the Lord's message of Malachi 3.1 enables him to arise and shine uh, in the most radiant, resplendent way, the glory of his most glorious, unconditional love ever identified. For in the word of God, he whose mercy shall endure forever, if he had not mercy upon us as his word declares, just as Nineveh was never destroyed in Jonah 4, and he's promising us if we will just be faithful to start being more loving, that everything will take care of itself. And so light that candle of hope that we will choose to beat our sword into the sickle and the understanding that Christ Jesus has always been the, the giver of the seeds of love and the sower thereof who has, has overtaken his own reaper, totally fulfilling Amos 9, the prophecy of him arising as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. For truly he has always been the Lord God of all mankind. And 2,000 years ago, Christianity grabbed uh, the title of all mankind and said, we are Israel and we are all mankind. So that the promise that was written to be given to all mankind in the latter days, they named it and claimed it and didn't even understand it. For it was written in Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2, for those that wish to have a candle of hope blazing stronger than any inferno, that you would realize that uh, in the latter days it would be given to 
Israel, the house of Israel. See, what happened is uh, Israel had their identity stolen, identity theft by early Christians. They grabbed all the Hebrew prophets' books and they said, we are Israel and all the prophecy in the Bible is for us. And they, they erased Israel's name and then they turned and said, and if they don't believe us, they go to hell. And then they assumed the identity of all mankind. And so the truth is their God is nothing but a respecter of men, him being uh, they're his favorites. They're his apples of his eye, and their apples got some really big stinky worms in it. So this is the restoration of all love and all things that Christ foretold in Matthew 17, 11. And if this restoration is not obeyed, by one who comes forth with eyes red and dull of wine. Genesis 49, 12 says that I have the scepter of all of God's kingdom age authority. If this restoration of love and the understanding as I am giving unadulterated his kingdom age new covenant, then Jesus Christ is kept in reserve in heaven as Peter prophesied and cannot return. This is his message of Malachi 3, 1 that his love has always been transcendent and that love has never been boxed into the boxes that we place him in and ourselves in. And so in this time, as his most amazing love comes forth spiritually to get away of all the bad religiosity born from Satan's uh, hurtful and endless lies, praise God that he's no longer in the darkest shadows, having been removed in accordance with Daniel 12, one provably in this hour. And so it's time to realize that um, more than ever, dedicated people of our living love of the ages, we badly need to understand that any wise soul choosing the Lord's ways of his unconditional godly love, they will never have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof, as many do as they live in the land of the walking dead where they allow Christ's light within them to go out. Because there's never been no good man, not the Pope, not Billy Graham, not me, nobody, none of you. <laughs> for sure none of you uh, because it is only Christ Jesus living in us that brings us love because he is love and all those who love are born of God and know him because God is love that is the secret name of Christ from Mark 4 if, for those that really want to know and know that no name will bow down at the distortional name of Jesus that only came forth in the 18th century the name that all will bow down to is his true name of love, the secret name of, that Mark 4 prophesied that would be revealed in the latter days because Christ Jesus is our Lord of love and our love of always. And so in this time, realize that the name of Jesus has been for a distortional Jesus who has condemnation in his mouth that was inserted there by religion. Because if you read his everlasting covenant of Jeremiah, I am your God, you are my people, I forgive your iniquity, I will never remember it. Where within those four sentences is any conditions? Now is the time for the shattering of the power of the holy people. Otherwise, they're just going to keep uh, theologically hogging heaven like hypocrites that do not believe God's living word. And so in this hour, it's time to realize more than ever before that if someone could somehow shield, if someone could somehow shield the canyon, they would never be able to behold the breathtaking beauty of the wind's nicest natural carvings. And as the wildfire of Chrislam blows throughout the lands, say to the flood of God's love that he'll be releasing, uh, say to it for to stop in the middle of our valleys, uh, as dry as they might be, and it will not obey. God will let his spirit of love race through all our driest valleys and uproot all the all the weeds, all the trees of, that shouldn't be there for the weed and the tares can no longer grow together. And in this hour, let the truth of love now raise 
up and let it ring out loud and clear that only when it's dark enough, truly may our Lord Almighty see, let any of us see his brightest stars. For the truest forms of Adonai's inward strength is clearly born within the deep silence of long suffering hearts, uh, not amidst joy. And because of that, where the awful grief of sorrow now abides, there also does holy ground exist under the all-seeing eyes of our everlasting Father God. And so it's time to hold up our palms, to receive love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace, because it is faith from faith and mercy from mercy if we will just let our love flow as little children. Jesus said that insofar as born again, you can't even tell where the wind blows. But he said you must be as a little child because when we were little, our, our love was a verb. We get in the land of the walking dead where we have a form of godliness denying the, the, denying the power of love. And our love has become a noun. It's dead. Dead love, dead faith. We might believe the Bible, but that's never been no good. Many are going to say, Lord, I believe. And he's going to say, I don't know you. You let your love light go out. That is the unforgivable sin because that's Jesus Christ living in you. And so praise ye the Lord, O servants of peace, for it's only within the darkness where any discerning souls could ever find Christ's most glorious light of love. And it's always unconditional, for as uh, he declares through this ministry, if there's ever been strings attached to our love, there is no love divine there at all. It's carnal love. It's manipulative love. It's, it's motivational for the wrong reasons kind of love it's selfish love and such creates only deepest sorrow and so let his brightest light of love's unconditionality flare up mightily all throughout the following generations with great magnificence so that our beloved love of the ages can always be near unto them and the flocks of our good shepherd over all the flocks of man he must now do uh, his best as we do our best to see that there's only two forces in the world love and the lack thereof and for that reason the spirit and the blades of man comes but in every end God's sickle of the spirit razor sharp with his unconditional love will break every sharp saber that was meant to fall upon hard his people of truth and so in this time, it's time to receive God's greatest good news. So in this hour, let perfect love cast away your fear. And let all fear and doubt about this good news of the everlasting gospel foretold in Revelation 14 to uh, help you put out your highest praise unto our beloved love of all. Because the the adoration he has for us revealed is much deeper than I ever even imagined. And so in this hour he is now giving away his most mighty power of love, not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. That's why he purrs like an itty bitty kitty or lion of Zion, because it shall be by the gentleness of that lamb hearted lion and lion hearted lamb. And so in this hour, our Lord of love, he's going forth to shake the circle of our globe silly around as farthest corners. So praise him evermore, our O dedicated people of truth. For the Lord is bringing forth his strongest healing power to completely dissolve his people's suffering. And then in exchange, they'll always be embracing some really deep loving feelings of being loved by El Shaddai, who is like a mother unto to us for it is he who is the equitable one and the crusader of freedom for all of those of love's equality and O oh, people of love evermore exalt the God who is not a respecter of men and a God who has no favorites a God who is all of our beloved and in these days evermore lift up that star of stars our truest star of Bethlehem 
because only he alone can reveal the over-the-top nature, the power and the goodness of himself flowing in such a loving and kind way as his gentle mercies come forth like a breath blowing butterfly kisses unto one and all of us as he calls each of our names as if we were the only one. And in this hour, it's time to finally understand the message of love that our Father of Lights needs to sparkle and dazzle our eyes and ears with. And for our Father of Lights has raised a standard of love. He is therefore a rewarder of all those pressing on. For all those who do shall be able to shine as the stars, as the book of Daniel 12 foretold, for these latter days when the veil is finally removed. So do not stop and do not linger in your journey, but strive for the lofty realities, says the Spirit, that the Almighty has put before all people in Habakkuk 2. For the vision was for the appointed time at the end, and it has finally come forth. You can behold my soul, which might not be no damn good, but I'll tell you something, the just will live by my faith, because I am already as hell for our Lord of love, as I embrace all people of the earth unto myself for him for he is our majesty of majesty shining in the most glorious radiance of his magnificency as he stands upon the great white cloud of revelation 14 sending his sickle into this earth and it is foretold that upon the latter day mountain of overflowing spiritual food who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away christ asked in matthew 20 uh, 44 24 45. Uh, the mountain, the Latter day Mountain, 10,000 videos now uh, of spiritual food. Upon this mountain, the people shall beat their sword into the sickle for his harvest of love if they want a world that will become a loving one. And so in this hour, it'll always be clear for everybody to see herein that there is only one God and only one Messiah. Christ the Lord between him and humanity and nor is there any question whatsoever that if the flocks of that good shepherd take care of their lives then Jesus shall take care of their very best dreams so let all sleeping believers now arise at the rolling thunder of his living word of that tr that true word of Allah's love uh, Adonai, the great almighty, Jehovah Nisi, who is the banner of love over one and all of us, declares he. And let all those awakened souls of his brightest light of love, let them pray and let those delighted spirits of illumination begin to rejoice and never cease. For there is no inspired word greater than this word of love because it launches us into the deep deep calls unto deep and he his wells are deeper than deep because it is always been bottomless and so in this hour his dove of love is coming forth as the most regal eagle of the eons so that we can mount up on eagle's wings and ascend into a higher place of love and be united as one with him and so it's time for a very powerful searchlight. Even the lights of the of the uh, uh, France, the off Eiffel Tower, <laughs> to shine. And so that can easily cut through all the darkness like rays, sharp as a razor blade. And it's time for heaven's rescue mission in accordance with Malachi 3 1. For such a supernatural spotlight of love will now begin sweeping over the choppiest waters of our humdrum life if only we will believe in love unending. So let any victims of any past demonic turbulence now be spared from grief as you let your love cast away your fear as the Lord brings healing as he arises as the son of love in Isaiah 60 foretold for this latter period. And so in this time, know that even the greatest heartache 
that could come unto many who are stupidly walking on some pretty stupid paths of unbelief. It doesn't have to be if you'll just become more patient with the Lord and turn your closed-mindedness inside out. Turn your frowns upside down. Let smiles flash His kindness unto others, for that is the language that, that even dumb people can understand. And so it's time to uh, make a new discovery, one of unending 